Good afternoon. Last Tuesday, we observed the anniversary of the adoption of the Constitution on September 17th. Sadly, on that day, the intelligence community inspector general formally notified the Congress that the administration was forbidding him from turning over a whistleblower complaint on Constitution Day. This is a violation of law. Shortly thereafter, press reports began to break of a phone call by the President of the United States calling upon a foreign power to intervene in his election. This is a breach of his constitutional responsibilities. The facts are these. The Intelligence Community Inspector General, who was appointed by President Trump, determined that the complaint is both of urgent concern and credible. And its disclosure, he went on to say, relates to one of the most significant and important of the Director of National Intelligence's responsibility to the American people. On Thursday, the Inspector General testified before the House Intelligence Committee stating that the acting Director of National Intelligence blocked him from disclosing the whistleblower complaint. This is a violation of law. The law is unequivocal. The DNI staff, uh, it, it says the DNI, DNI, Director of National Intelligence, shall provide Congress the full whistleblower complaint. For more than 25 years, I've served on the Intelligence Committee as a member, as the ranking member, as part of the gang of four, even before I was in the leadership. I was there when, uh, when we created the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. That did not exist before 2004. I was there even earlier in the 90s when we wrote the whistleblower laws and continued to write them to improve them to ensure the security of our intelligence and the safety of our whistleblowers. I know what their purpose was, and we proceeded with balance and caution as we wrote the laws. I can say with authority the Trump administration's actions undermine both our national security and our intelligence and our protections of the whistleblowers, more than both. This Thursday, the acting DNI will appear before the House Intelligence Committee. At that time, he must turn over the whistleblower's full complaint to the committee. He will have to choose whether to break the law or honor his responsibility to the Constitution. On the final day, of the Constitutional Convention in 1787, when our Constitution was adopted, Americans gathered on the steps of Independence Hall to wait the news of the government our founders had crafted. They asked Benjamin Franklin, what do we have, a republic or a monarchy? Franklin replied, a republic if you can keep it. Our responsibility is to keep it. Our republic endures because of the wisdom of our Constitution, enshrined in three co-equal branches of government, serving as checks and balances on each other. The actions taken to date by the President have seriously violated the Constitution, especially when the President says, Article 2 says I can do whatever I want. For the past several months, we have been investigating in our committees and litigating in the courts so the House can gather all the relevant facts and consider whether to exercise its full Article I powers, including a constitutional power of the utmost gravity, approval of articles of impeachment. And this week, the President has admitted to asking the President of Ukraine to take actions which would benefit him politically. The, action of the, the actions of the Trump presidency revealed dishonorable fact of the President's betrayal of his oath of office, betrayal of our national security, and betrayal of the integrity of our elections. Therefore, today, I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. I'm directing our six committees to proceed with their investigations under that umbrella of impeachment inquiry. The President must be held accountable. No one is above the law. Getting back to our founders, in the darkest days of the American Revolution, Thomas Paine wrote, the times have found us. The times found them to fight for and establish our democracy. The times have found us today. 
not to place ourselves in the same category of greatness as our founders, but to place us in the urgency of protecting and defending our Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And the words of Ben Franklin, to keep our republic. I thank our chairman, Chairman, chairman Nadler, Chairman Schiff, of, Chairman Nadler of Judiciary, Chairman Schiff of Intelligence, Chairman Engel of Foreign Affairs, Chairman Cummings uh, of, of uh, Oversight, and Chairman Cummings I've been in touch with constantly. He's a master of, of so much, but including uh, inspectors general and, and uh, whistleblowers. Uh, Congresswoman Richie Neal of the, of the uh, Ways and Means Committee, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, of the Foreign Financial Services Committee. And I commend all of our, our members, our colleagues, for their thoughtful, thoughtful approach to all of this, for their careful statements. God bless them, and God bless America. Thank you all. Madam Speaker, never before has the president been convicted by the Senate. What has this accomplished if the Senate doesn't convict? Very important historic announcement from the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, announcing today the opening of what she calls an official impeachment inquiry into the president of the United States. As she repeatedly suggested, there were violations of law, there was uh, violations of the Constitution, and as a result, it justifies the beginning of a new phase in this entire impeachment potential process. Uh, Manu Raju is up on Capitol Hill. Manu, we anticipated this. Obviously, a very dramatic moment. Yeah, we, absolutely. It's after more than a, about a year of Nancy Pelosi resisting calls for moving forward with impeachment, throwing cold water on uh, moving forward, saying that the existing investigations were good enough, she has made a dramatic shift that could lead President Trump to be just the third president in United States history to get impeached. Now that she is behind this effort, a lot of Democrats here on Capitol Hill believe it's almost inevitable that the House Judiciary Committee ultimately will move forward on articles of impeachment against this president. It's clear that the revelations about the president's handling of this whistleblower complaint, the president acknowledging he spoke to the Ukrainian president about the Biden's questions about whether or not he sought to withhold the aid to Ukraine in exchange for this pressuring, uh, this investigation of the Biden's was a bridge too far for the House Speaker and for other Democrats. He, and Democrats believe this is a message that's much easier to deliver to the American public because they say it's very clear in their view that the president may have broken the law and that's what Need, necessitates a formal impeachment inquiry. Now, what she said here, Wolf, was interesting. We've been hearing she's been saying this behind closed doors this afternoon, how this is going to work. There are six committees that are investigating right now, uh, already engaged in an investigation of this president, led in part by the House Judiciary Committee, House Intelligence Committee. Those investigations will continue. Ultimately, they're going to decide how to move forward on articles of impeachment. They will draft, presumably, down the line, if they decide to go that route, articles of impeachment that will later move to the House Judiciary Committee, which will formally vote to impeach this president. And that, at that point, it would go to the full House in which the House would vote to impeach this president. Again, that would be the third time in history that this would happen. But as we know, Republicans have no appetite for moving forward. They believe they're defending this president. And if the House does move to impeach him, almost certainly the Republican-led Senate will not convict this president and remove him from office. So in a lot of ways, uh, this will be a symbolic move of sorts but a very significant and historic move. The House does move forward with an impeachment, formal impeachment proceeding. But, Wolf, Nancy Pelosi coming out here saying she supports uh, launching an official impeachment inquiry, a very historic move from a speaker who has been reluctant to move forward. But more and more Democrats, an overwhelming majority, believe this is the right thing to do. We'll see where this ends up. Very, Wolf. A very significant shift on her part. Uh, and as I said, a very historic moment. Amano, stand by. Uh, Dana, you've been doing a lot of reporting on this. Uh, she also said no one is above the law, referring to the president of the United States. Uh, and what he was doing was a betrayal of the Constitution. The fact that she gave a preamble about uh, her experience on the intelligence committees, uh, that she comes at this not just uh, from understanding the law, how things are supposed to work, but then, of course, talking about it in very big, very sweeping terms about the Constitution of the United States. It, it, it's really hard to overstate how historic this is. As Manu said, it's just, you can't even, you, it's barely a hand, uh, one hand that you can count on how many times this has happened. And it is a last resort. The House Democrats feel that they have reached that last resort. And there has been so much pressure on her. She has resisted 
uh, for so long since they took the majority from many people in the base who have been saying, come on already, we gave you the majority, why aren't you using it? Now she says she has seen an issue that she believes that the American public understands and should be outraged by because her number one concern has all along been, I can't do this until I have the public behind me. She sees some public sentiment, but she's clearly trying to marry that by pushing out her rank and file to support what she now has reluctantly gotten behind, with, which is an impeachment inquiry.